Good morning, Shavua Tov, Agutavach. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Kila Chari Torah Halacha Review for Sunday, the 7th of March. We are going back now to Kitzer Shulchan Aruch, the uh, uh, abbreviated, shortened uh, code of Jewish law. We're going to look now at the laws and customs of preparing for the Seder. Uh, here's what he writes. You should do your best to obtain choice wine to perform the mitzvah of drinking the four cups. If red wine is available, in other words, it's of, of comparable quality as white wine, uh, and it's kashrus, it's, uh, it's just as reliable as the white, red wine is preferred. We have a verse in Proverbs that teaches us that, uh, and in halacha usually we consider red wine to be more significant, more considerable, uh, val- worthwhile, desirable. Uh, than uh, white wine. In addition, because it reminds us of the blood which flowed when Pharaoh slaughtered innocent Jewish children, uh, that, uh, that uh, we do uh, have that aspect to red wine also. Now here's what he writes, because he's writing, remember, in about the 1880s or so in Europe, in backward and ignorant countries, without mentioning any, any names, where people make slanderous accusations uh, about you know Jews and blood, Jews refrain from using red wine on Pesach. So uh, I think we're not in one of those countries. The slanders against the Jews are uh, for coming from a completely different uh, field. Uh, so uh, we should feel free and comfortable using red wine on Pesach. For the first dipping, the first vegetable that we dip, karpas, many people follow the custom of using parsley, but even better to use celery, which also tastes good when it's raw. Best of all, he says, use radishes. They're a little bit strong. Uh, but uh, there you have it. Some people use potatoes, some use onions, some use watercress, some use Belgian endive, all kinds of different possibilities. The determining factor is it should be something, uh, the, the, the main consideration, something on which you make bore uh, peri ha'adama, the bracha bore peri ha'adama, blesses God who creates the fruit of the ground, brings forth produce from the ground. That's the key determining factor. The second is that it should be able to be bug free. So some of those vegetables that we mentioned are very easy to check for bugs or they don't get infested very much to begin with so that makes them desirable. Okay. Uh, for the maror, for the bitter herbs, it's customary to use horseradish which you can grate because it is very sharp. Those big chunks are pretty, uh, pretty powerful but you should take care that it doesn't lose its strength completely. It should be grated when you come home from shul. We're not going to do that uh, uh, on the night of. Hopefully do that uh, before. If you wind up doing it uh, on the night of Pesach it will be good and sharp. Uh, that's okay. Uh, on Shabbos, of course, forbidden to grate the maror, so you should grate it before that. Keep it covered till nightfall, as we mentioned the other day. Uh, even, he says, preferable to use chazeres, to use lettuce, uh, romaine lettuce, which is uh, easier to eat and is called maror because as it stays in the ground for a long time, the stem becomes bitter. I've also heard it said that uh, it's uh, sweet when it's young. Uh, young romaine lettuce is uh, sweeter and then it becomes bitter later on also reminding us of the Egyptian exile how it started out one way and wound up quite different uh, almost before we knew it uh, y- uh, let's see uh, all the species you can fulfill the mitzvah of eating marer can be combined to make a kezayis you want to eat a good couple of ounces of that so uh, you can use different ones uh, and uh, have that be your amount of uh, of uh, Maror, bitter herb, the charosis, the uh, uh, remembrance of the, uh, of the mortar that we used to join the bricks when we were slaves, should have a thick consistency to recall the mortar which our ancestors had to make into bricks. When you're ready to dip the maror into it, you add a little wine or vinegar to make it soft, uh, to represent the blood also, and for the additional reason that it becomes fit to dip something. If you have something hard, uh, it's hard to uh, dip into it, right? The charosis should be, could be, should be made from fruits that symbolize the Jewish people. Uh, figs, nuts, not that the Jewish people are nuts, mind you, but because there's a, a reference to that in the Song of Songs. Dates, uh, pomegranates, uh, apples, right? Almonds, all kinds of different uh, uh, various scriptural allusions of the Jewish people to different uh, delicious and nutritious fruits. Um, uh, you should put spices in it that look like straw, like cinnamon and ginger, not finely ground to have straw-like strands in it, to recall the straw the Jews used to knead the mortar. Uh, on Shabbos, you don't pour the wine and vinegar into the charosis. You have to do it another way. Uh, this year, uh, yeah, the uh, Yom Tif is not on uh, Shabbos. We don't have to worry. Um, and if you don't, uh, yeah, okay, that's that. Uh, we have to talk still about the other cooked foods on the uh, Seder plate, so perhaps we will save that for tomorrow. In the meantime, have a good day and a good week.